So I woke up this morning still in a bit of a state of shock, to say the least. But I do want to make this point before we dive into kind of some Kirk Cousins replacements and just some Vikings trade rumors. I want to say this. I don't necessarily think the season is over just yet. We have seen crazier things happen in the National Football League with a rookie quarterback stepping in and leading the Vikings or whatever team it was to the promised land and even going farther beyond that. So I just want to say I don't believe the season is just over because I do think the Vikings have a great support system around whoever the quarterback may be. If they do end up rolling with Jaron Hall, if they do end up you know, trading for some guys we'll talk about here on today's video. But man, the Vikings do have one of the best offensive lines in the National Football League. We saw it again yesterday. I mean, Christian Darisaw and Brian O'Neill are by far the best tackle combo in the league. I mean, PFF has them graded out as such. Then also you kick it to the weapons. I mean, we've seen Jordan Addison the last two weeks. He looks like a true wide receiver one. And once 18 comes back from this hamstring injury, and plus K.J. Osborne going for 100 yards yesterday, T.J. Hawkinson has bounced back the last two weeks. Like in terms of a support system around a quarterback, the Vikings have a great one. I mean, maybe that shows or maybe that's a big reason why Kirk's been playing so well the past two weeks is because of the other guys. And then also on the defensive side of the football, shout out to Brian Flores. Last three weeks holding teams to under 20 points in each of the last three games. I think he's looked great. I think the defense is flying around more. We've seen a rejuvenated Harrison Smith. We obviously know what Daniil Hunter is, which uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Daniil Hunter is on this football team uh, Wednesday because trade deadline's tomorrow, and I bet you a ton of teams are going to be throwing first-round picks for Daniil. So we'll kind of touch on that a little bit in tomorrow's video. But listen, defense has turned around. They have looked good. You also got Kevin O'Connell. I've been very critical of Kevin O'Connell. And honestly, he knows way more football than I do. But so I don't even know why you know critique him because he has looked great this year, especially the last two weeks. I think his play calling has been uh, fantastic. I would have liked him to get aggressive in a little more spots yesterday in the Green Bay game. But the play calling has been great. He's been getting the uh, ball in the hands of the Vikings, unreal playmakers. So they've been good uh, on that side of things. But before we dive into some, you know, obviously some replacements, um, I do just want everybody to show Kirk some love, man. Type those eights down in the comment section because, listen, I mean, my heart goes out to the guy. Like, the last two weeks, he's playing the two best football games of his career. And, listen, you know what I keep thinking back of is that quarterback Netflix series is when Kirk Cousins are going through his house and they have that, you know, mantle for the Lombardi Trophy. And I think this year was probably his best chance to ever get that because the Vikings, you know, it's probably the best team he's ever had around him. So, listen, he tore his Achilles. It's official. Vikings got to move on for the first time in five years. We're really uncertain who's going to be the quarterback for this team. But type those eights. Let's dive into today's show. So we're going to start off with some Kirk Cousins replacements. Obviously, you know, we got to find out who the quarterback is going to be. And I'll give you guys my take on who I think it should be. But the biggest name that I think, uh, I don't know if this is the most likely by any means, but the one I would want the most is actually Trey freaking Lance, man. The hometown kid. Bring him back home. Obviously, he was traded to the Dallas Cowboys from the San Francisco 49ers. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what type of draft compensation they could get from him. But, you know, like we've been saying at the top of the show, like Trey Lance, he's a very raw quarterback, but he's got a lot of talent. But in terms of like, if you would put him in this Viking system and the combination of his, you know, mobility and like obviously the weapons we have, I think any quarterback could necessarily be successful. I think the Niners are actually a great example of this. You know, Brock Purdy, not the biggest talent, talented quarterback in the league, not even close at all, but like, Kyle Shanahan and the weapons around him have made him look so damn good. And I'm not saying the Vikings offense is comparable to the Niners offense because I think the Niners are way better up front. But the Vikings offense, like in terms of a complete unit, it's up there in the National Football League. So I would take a chance on Trey Lance. He's probably my number one Kirk Cousins replacement. I don't know how much he would go for. I was talking to Tom Downey, he runs a Cowboys channel here. He said maybe a third or a fourth. Or even he threw out there, maybe just trade Ezra Cleveland straight up for Trey Lance, which that's an interesting one as well. But Trey Lance, he's probably number one on my list as who I would want to replace Kirk Cousins. But then number two for me, Jameis Winston. Obviously uh, down in New Orleans right now. Uh, Jameis is an interesting one because, you know, obviously he had that 30 touchdown, 30 interception season with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then he came to New Orleans. He sat behind Drew Brees uh, for a year or two um, and really learned from, you know, obviously Sean Payton uh, in that regards. And was it Jameis? I mean, the talent's there. I mean, Jameis is a very talented guy. Obviously, the decision-making is his, you know, negative side of his game. But, man, if you give Jameis Winston, like, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, give him Kevin O'Connell to maybe, you know, rein him in a little bit, I don't even think that's a uh, bad option at all. So, in terms of, like, 
Max potential quarterback trade options, like instead of like the Andy Daltons and like we'll talk about Jacoby Brissett here in a second, but like in terms of dudes who could take a next step in their game, I think Trey Lance and Jameis Winston are two guys that the Vikings should seriously consider if they kind of want to maybe go for the home run or try to strike out. Like those are the big boom or bust guys on my list. But the safer choices, which would be the next two here, uh, Jacoby Brissett. Um, Jacoby Brissett was actually pretty damn good for the Cleveland Browns last season when he did have to fill in for uh, Deshaun Watson when he was uh, suspended. So Jacoby Brissett, this would be the typical, like, hey, the Vikings are going to try to run the football 30 times a game, lean on their defense, like, be the typical game manager. But the problem with the Vikings offense, like, I've been saying how good the weapons are, how good, you know, the guys are on the outside, and how good the offensive line is. But the Vikings have still yet to be able to just get that consistent running game. So if you bring in a guy like Brissett, He's the guy that's going to need to lean on the running game. The Vikings don't really have that so far. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see what direction they really go in. But I got Brissett as uh, my third option on this list. But I'll kick it to you guys right now. And I do have two more coming up around the corner. But who do you want to replace Kirk Cousins? It could even be Jaron Hall, which I'll give you guys my take on him in a second. Let me know down in the comment section, who would you want to replace Kirk Cousins? I got two more names coming up for you guys in a second. But I do got to give a huge shout out. To today's sponsor of Vikings Now, and that's Prize Picks. If you guys head to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use the promo code CLNS, you guys will get a first deposit match up to $100. Guys, listen, it's Daily Fantasy Made Easy. All you do is pick two or more players, choose more or less on their projected stat types, and win some serious cash. This is the lineup I'm rolling with tonight for Monday Night Football. I'm taking the less than Josh Jacobs, 59 and a half rushing yards. And then I love Jameer Gibbs. I got Jameer Gibbs actually on my fantasy team, so I'm taking more than 71 and a half rushing yards for him. I think the Lions, they're a pretty good football team. Raiders, they're a bad football team. I'm going to keep it simple as that. So I'm, that's what I'm rocking with tonight. You guys can get in on the fun at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS and get a first deposit match up to $100. I'll put that link for you guys in the uh, comment section and the description of today's show. So how about this one? This is not a trade rumor, but this would be signing a free agent. Um, obviously, I've heard the Tom Brady smoke uh, out there as well. Mark Florio suggested it. And listen, I'm just not, not going to entertain it. I just don't think it's a realistic possibility. But how about Carson Wentz, huh? And I think this would be pretty funny. I was thinking about just like Carson Wentz, like uh, how would you say it? Like character development or whatever you want to say, like path in the NFL. Like Carson Wentz, he was a starting quarterback for those Eagles teams. He gets hurt. Nick Foles steps in. He wins a Super Bowl. What if it's a complete opposite? What if now he steps in for Kirk Cousins and now Carson Wentz leads the Vikings to the Super Bowl? Obviously, extremely unlikely. Kind of kidding on that standpoint. But hey, Carson Wentz, he's just sitting on his couch right now. He's a talented guy. Obviously, he kind of has the same you know, pros and cons that Jameis Winston does. Jameis Winston has where it's like, hey, big time arm talent. Just not the best decision maker by any means. But, you know, Wentz would be a very interesting option. I would consider Wentz. But, again, how much, like... If you bring Wentz in a one-year, $2 million deal, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't really think he gets the job done. But here's another one. Uh, what about Andy Dalton, uh, backup quarterback for Bryce Young in Carolina right now? I've been a big fan of Andy Dalton, maybe because he's got the best red hair I've ever seen on a man in my life. But uh, listen, Andy Dalton's an interesting one because he would be more of like that Jacoby Brissett guy you're going to bring in where it's like that veteran quarterback where you just expect him to be a game manager, you know, hand the ball off hopefully 25, 30 times a game. But, you know, Andy Dalton, I think he's got a little more talent than Jacoby Brissett. And again, with all of these guys, this would probably be the most talent they would ever have around them in their NFL career. So, Listen, out of all those five guys, I would lean on Trey Lance because he's got that more, you know, boom or bust potential to him. And listen, he's a hometown kid. There's pictures of him when he was five years old. He was rocking, uh, you know, Vikings uniforms and he was dressing up as like Randy Moss on Halloween. So I would consider Trey Lance. I don't know what the trade compensation would be. Maybe you give Dallas a third round pick or maybe you give him Ezra Cleveland because they've had uh, some injuries to their offensive line. But my overall take with this, obviously there's a lot of talk. Should they trade for this guy? Should they sign this guy? da 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 I say you just roll in here. I say you roll with Jaron Hall. Uh, obviously, I put down here the next Tom Brady, kind of joking. But, you know, you really never know what you have in an NFL quarterback. I mean, Jaron Hall, listen, he's 25 years old. He's got more college reps than a lot of players. I think he's more, you know, NFL ready than if he was a guy like Trey Lance, for example. He had very limited snaps in college. So, my opinion, I say you roll with Jaron Hall. You're going to give him a great support system. You're going to also find out if you have something there 
very, very fast. Because, listen, the schedule in the next couple weeks, it's the Falcons, and then it's the Broncos, and then it's the Raiders and the Bears. I honestly, with or without Kirk Cousins, would expect the Vikings to be in every one of those games and to seriously compete, and they have a really good chance to win all of those. Vikings are 4-4. Four and four. What if Jaron Hall wins three, goes 3-1 three and one over the next four? And we're looking at, we're like, damn, the Vikings are, what would that be, 7-5. and five. You're a playoff team in the NFC because the a- NFC is very top-heavy. So I'd roll with Jaron Hall. You never know. You might have the next Tom Brady up your sleeve. But close it off with this. Do you believe in Jaron Hall? I, I think it's 99.999% that the Vikings are rolling with Jaron Hall this year as their quarterback. I don't expect them to make a trade. I agree with that notion. Save all your draft capital. Save it all for if you do have to go trade up for a quarterback in next year's draft in a loaded draft class, you can do so. But also what I'm curious about is the other guy. What do you do about Daniil Hunter? What if a team calls you? We just saw uh, Leonard Williams go for a second and a fifth. What if the Jags call you and say, we'll give you a first and a second for Hunter? I don't know, man. The Vikings have a lot they need to consider over the next 24 hours. That's why you guys do hit the subscribe button. Because if Daniil, if he ends up going to Jacksonville or wherever it may be, we're obviously going to make a video about it. If they end up trading for a quarterback or maybe even signing Tom Brady and getting his old ass out of retirement, we'll have a video as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Season's not over. Trying to, you know... Put a smile on my face on this uh, Victory Monday. We beat the Packers by two scores yesterday. You can always smile about that. But uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Let's go, Vikes.